Hey guys, just wanted to share this new tool that was made by Dominic. Um, <clears throat> it's a basically a denoise batch processor. And so some of you guys know that there's the Intel denoiser, there's optics. Um, and you could use these tools with the command line. Um, a lot of people don't like working with command line or PowerShell. It's a little scary and confusing. And so I suggested to them, you know, how about we make this into a, an HDA or something that we could pass through using TOPS, so PDG. And basically this is the result. So I'm gonna link below this video where to download the HDA. Once you download the HDA, you're just gonna drop it off in your Houdini OTLs section and you're just gonna paste it in here. So here it is, the denoise batch HDA. And so what that does is it's just going to fire off our PDG to the command line tool. So that way you guys don't actually have to do it manually. Now, in order for this to work, you're going to need to download the command line tools for Intel's denoiser or for optics yourself. And um, you can't use the official one. And the reason is because the Intel official denoiser from the Intel GitHub does not include support for different image formats. And so you can't just load up an EXR into it. But luckily, someone else has compiled it. So Declan here, Declan Russell, if you go to his GitHub, Declan Russell, um, he has compiled for us the NVIDIA denoiser and the Intel denoiser to support different image formats. So you're just gonna come to his GitHub and you're gonna click on Intel denoiser and under the releases section, you're gonna click releases and you'll see a zip file here. So you're gonna just download this zip and extract it, you know, wherever you guys wanna install it at. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, you need to have, if you wanna use both, you're gonna to wanna to download both. So you could switch between the two. Um, and so what this tool does is it batch processes your renders in the background so you can batch process an entire folder um, <clears throat> instead of using the uh, render view. So in this example, we've got that we're gonna just do one frame. I'm gonna show you guys how to use it. And once you unzip one of these into a location, what you end up with is something like this. So you've got this folder full of stuff and then the denoiser.exe. And so normally you'd have to fire up a PowerShell or something and um, open that up here. And using that, you could then type in command line, you know, denoise, whatever, right? But like I said, some people don't like using command line in PowerShell because, you know, it can be a little confusing. So normally you'd get something like this. You'd start, you know, drop, drop down a command and start typing in what you want to do with the denoiser and what images you want to denoise. And so that's a little more confusing. And we have Houdini uh, tops and PDG to basically automate this entire process. So why not use it? Um, so the only things you guys got to worry about is t um, downloading the tool ahead of time from Declan's page and installing the uh, HDA. And so now we've got, let's, let's say we've already done that, right? So how do we use this? So in order to use the uh, tool, we gotta just come up to our object level and we need to drop down a top net. And so here's our top net. We're gonna dive in here and we've got our local scheduler. I have not tried this using HQ or deadline. So <laughs> we don't know if it works. You, it might, you know, if you guys wanna experiment, let me know. Um, we just have it set up to work locally on your on your individual machine. Uh, so. Anyways, we've got our local scheduler. What we need to do is feed it our ROP data, so our render data. So we're gonna type down a ROP fetch. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull in our ROP, our Redshift ROP frames. So we need to point it to a ROP path. And so here we go. And we're gonna use Redshift ROP one. And so this is gonna pull in the information on our ROP and we can evaluate a single frame or a frame range. So, you know, whatever our project is. Um, 
I'm going to just do a single frame for, for this example so you guys don't have to wait. But it will work on a frame range. So if you send this, you know, 10 frames, 100 frames, 1,000 frames, it's going to do it. So just keep that in mind. If you want to do a frame range, select a frame range. We're going to do a single frame for our purposes. And now we just need to look up the HDA. So if you installed it correctly and you start typing denoise or denoiser, you're going to get the uh, Dominic batch denoiser. And so this HDA, you just drop it down here and we're going to wire it into our ROP fetch. And so what happens is as our ROP renders frames, it then passes it to the denoising um, system and then it uses the command line tool to denoise as frames get completed. So it automates the entire process if you're doing, you know, multiple frames like an animation. So now that we've got this down here, we uh, want to set this as the output. And you have two options. You have the Intel or NVIDIA denoisers. So we're going to just switch over to Intel. Um, Intel, the command line does not include a blend amount, unfortunately. And so this lets you control the strength of the denoising only the nvidia denoiser currently has this so just something to keep in mind if you're wondering why that disappeared um hdr image so you need to have this activated if your renders an hdr format exr um i mean you could denoise a png or a jpeg so you could disable this but you know yeah you should probably denoise a higher quality image it does better so we're going to keep hdr activated and then the denoiser exe this is the path to wherever you unzipped your file. So denoiser exe right here, right? So we can just copy paste that path. I already have it set. So well, actually this is optics. We want to use Intel. Here we go. And so this is going to point to the exe file. So you could just tell wherever you guys decide to unzip, point it there. And then we have these two options albedo AOV and normal AOV. And so what that means is the, the denoisers require an albedo or diffuse filter, depending on the renderer, they're gonna call it a little bit different. And the normal AOV is bump normals. It's not just regular normals, it, it requires the bump normal data for better detail. So depending on what you guys name this, you're gonna wanna fill this in yourself manually. So we're gonna just jump up here in Redshift and we're gonna to go to the Redshift AOVs and we're gonna make two AOVs. And we're gonna find Diffuse Filter, which is Albedo. And you guys can name this whatever you want, you know, cause you're, you're gonna type in the same name manually. So we could just say Albedo. And our bump normals, where is that? Bump normals. And we'll just call this normals. And so now these are the names that you need to actually point to um, so that the tool knows how to filter out our files. And something to keep in mind is unfortunately the command line tool does not work with multi-layer EXRs. So you have to make sure that you're rendering individual files for your AOVs. So I'm gonna actually have to come up here to our output. And where was it? Output common. Oh yeah, common. And I have to make sure that full multi-layered EXR is disabled. No. So we want no multi-layered EXR. It needs an individual file for the AOVs because the command line tool unfortunately doesn't work with multi-layer EXRs, currently at least. So cool. We've uh we need to point where it's getting our AOVs from. So I'm gonna just drag that up. It's getting it from this AOV um, ROP node here. And yeah, let's uh, let's just crank up our, our, our adaptive error so that <laughs> the quality's bad, pretty much. So we could see the before and the after denoising and see how it looks, you know? So 16, 256, a really high adaptive error. I think this is a 4K render, so we'll see what it comes out like. And actually, let's uh, do a quick little IPR render. So let's uh, open up this window. And so this is a 4K render, pretty big. 
Um, yeah, very noisy, as you guys can see. But, you know, it's rendering very quickly. Okay, cool. So this is what we're going to feed into the render. Now, since this is a batch command line tool, we're not going to be able to see this in the render view. So the assumption is that you're happy with your render, and now you're just preparing to batch denoise everything. So let's uh, just stop our render. Let's close that. And getting an error, but whatever. Um, the, uh, the tool will automatically denoise wherever your files are being saved to, so wherever your output is. So for me, it's under my hip, render, and then the uh, file structure name. So for my project, the files are going to end up in here. So it's empty. There's nothing in here right now. And let's go to our top net. So as soon as we start rendering here, it's going to queue up our renders and then denoise after. But we have to make sure that we type in the names for the AOVs. So we used albedo and normals, I believe. Let me uh, quick mark this come back out just to make sure yeah so albedo and normals you guys can name this whatever you want um, as long as you give it the same name here and yeah this should be good to go so all we got to do now is start the uh, pdg so we could just cook selected node or dirty and cook if we already tried to render it and we made a mistake so it's gonna um asked to save our project we're going to say yes we're going to let it go and you'll notice that we have one task because we're only rendering one frame and so it's going to process our frames and then when it's done rendering it's going to then pass it over to the uh, denoiser so if you have you know 50 frames or whatever you're going to see 50 little dots being processed and then being denoised right after this tool will work in any renderer so it's not just for Redshift, it works for whatever. It's as long as you guys just have the uh, proper naming convention, it should work. Um, as long as you know the renderer can generate <laughs> the, uh, the albedo and a, nor a bump normal map. So cool, we're gonna let that process and we should start to see some folders showing up or some files. And so we're gonna let this just do its thing let it render and it'll automatically then pick up the files and then process them using the uh, denoiser command line tool. So I'm gonna just pause this so you guys don't have to wait wait around while this does its thing. So I'll be right back. All right guys, so here it is. The, uh, the render finished and so did our denoising batch HDA. So what happens is here we have our albedo and here we have our normals, these two AOVs. And then we have just our regular render, the, the, the noisy render. And then we get this fourth file after this is done processing called um, denoised in the beginning. So it's going to have the uh, prefix of denoised underscore and then your file name. And that's how you know this is the denoised output after. So this is our noisy and this is going to be our denoised so we're going to open them up in photoshop so you guys can check them out and see you know let's see what happened and actually i'm going to re-render this i just realized that i forgot to change the sample filtering so um when you're denoising the uh, algorithms tend to like box filtering the most and i forgot to switch that over so don't use goss or mitchell or anything just use box with a sample filter of one and that'll keep it in, in what I would consider the, the renderer's happiest settings with. So I'm going to just, we're going to retry this again and, you know, let's see what, what we get. So it could, it could provide better results. And it's easy to do, just, you know, we'll hit Shift V and it'll just start to re-render. Or actually, no, we need to do it up here to re-cook from the top. So let's, uh, let's dirty all, all of this from here and we'll just process everything all over again. 
And so now it's going to re-render, or it should start to re-render, <laughs> but it looks like it didn't. And we need to, let's see, delete selected node results from disk. Yes, there we go. Okay, that's why the uh, files are still on disk. And now let's uh, recook. Okay, so we're going to re-render this real quick, just using box filtering so it helps denoise better. And I forgot to mention that. And yeah, if you when you guys render, whatever renderer you're using, try to use the um, the least amount of filtering. So box filtering is considered what usually works best. Um, okay, so let's. I'm going to pause this again, and we'll be right back. All right, so here we are now inside of Photoshop, and we're going to just kind of check out the result. So this is the uh, noisy render. Um, yeah, you know, it's pretty noisy in spots. And if we disable that and we look at our denoised version, you know, it, it did a pretty good job in, in some of these spots right here. It's not perfect, obviously, you know, there's still noise in quite a lot of spots. But considering how fast this 4K render was made, um, you know, the denoiser, if you look at some of this right here, I mean, that's a pretty big difference, you know, without having to waste a lot of time since it's really fast to denoise after the fact. So, yeah, very cool. And, yeah, you could batch process tons of renders this way. So I would probably use this to just kind of check out the result, see how it looks after denoising, and then if we're happy with the uh, samples amount, you know, fire off your animation and then process it using the denoiser after and I mean, yeah, it did, you know, it did pretty good. Like right here, you know, not bad. From before, after. So, yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, hopefully you guys now know how to use this uh, HDA and how to kind of, if you've never really played around with tops or anything, this will get, get you kind of started and how to set it up what settings you might need to set. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys appreciate this little tool. It's pretty neat. I will link to the tool below in the um, description of the video, and I'll also link to uh, Declan's uh, GitHub page so you guys can download the denoiser the, itself, the Intel and Optics denoisers, the command line tools, and then, because um, you have to get that for this to work. And yeah, once you guys have all that stuff, just set it up kind of how I showed you here and, you know, happy rendering. <laughs> so thanks again, guys, for all the support. I appreciate it um, and have a great day.